Well, good evening here. Good afternoon out west. I am Brian Sullivan. All that and more coming up across the hour. But first up on Last Call, happy Friday to all of you investors out there because you've been making money again. New records on the street of dreams. The S&P 500 powering about 5,100 for the first time ever. The Nasdaq surging to an all-time high, finally surpassing that 2021 record that's been just so pesky for so long. So what exactly has been leading the tech bull run? Okay, this is not exactly a hard question. It has been NVIDIA, apparently everybody's favorite stock, closing above a $2 trillion valuation. Keep this in mind. Four years ago, NVIDIA was worth just $170 billion. A lot of money, but not $2 trillion. And this is even more mind-blowing. We're not doing an RBI tonight, but if we did, this would be it. Just 10 years ago, NVIDIA was worth $12 billion. That means that just 120 or so short months ago, whatever it is, NVIDIA was about the same size as J.M. Smucker or Campbell's Soup are now. And it's had a 17,800% gain over that time. No doubt, NVIDIA has minted new, many new millionaires. Now, overall, the Nasdaq's remarkable run began in the, the beginning of December, really. That is when the Fed signaled that it would begin likely cutting rates this year. But now, some are questioning if we will get any rate cuts at all. Here is Apollo Investments Chief Economist Torsten Slock earlier today. We expect now that the Fed will probably stay on hold until the end of this year because the tailwind to growth over the next several quarters continues to be so strong. Now, remember, the Federal Reserve began its rate hike, one of the most aggressive and fast rate hike cycles ever nearly two years ago. Since then, the S&P 500 has gone up about 20 percent. So do we just kind of shrug off the Fed and can the markets continue to hit new highs even if we don't get rate cut cuts? What if Torsten Slock and others like him are correct? Let's talk about it with our friend Tom Lee. He is Fundstrat managing partner and head of research. Uh, Tom. Uh, what do you think? Does the, I'm going to ask a question that, you know, does the Fed matter? Uh, the Fed definitely matters. Um, if the Fed is hawkish and is concerned about inflation reaccelerating and communicates that and interest rates rise, stocks would go down. So Fed definitely matters. If we don't get a Fed cut this year, Will that change your views and or the trajectory of ye old stock market, Tom? Yes, I think if there's no cuts this year, the stock market has to reassess what it's thinking in terms of uh, the trajectory of inflation, the probability of a soft landing. And of course, all these things would weigh on what would happen to multiple. So, yes, it would absolutely make a difference. OK, so. Let's say we had one month of inflation, the PCE a little bit wacky. One of Torsten Slock at Apollo's arguments is that there are signs to him and his team that inflation may be either stickier or maybe even reinflating in some areas and not just owner's equivalent rent. What is your take on inflation right now, Tom? Uh, I think the overarching reality is inflation is falling. Uh, you can look at it by the percentage of components that are in deflation from their peak, or you can look at it, as you said, core services, X housing and auto insurance. Those are all basically at the Fed's target. There is something that does happen early in the year, which is that there's that seasonality in January that doesn't get completely fixed. That's why January was a sort of positive surprise. And that's because a lot of companies raise prices on January in the month of January oh. and it doesn't get captured. Oh, so maybe it's kind of a, ca a calendar corporate. Are you saying, Tom, that corporate greed is really the underlying cause of inflation? Uh, yes. I mean, if you think about like, you know, companies raise prices either at the time of a renewal. Uh, but if it's a calendar year, which is a lot more convenient, especially because that's a calendar year end for a business, they'll actually raise prices in the month of January. And if they don't, raise it on the exact same date every year, well, the seasonal adjustment will catch it on the wrong way. Um, that's why I think January and February tend to have that high, what they call residual seasonality. 
You know, Tom, people know you as the guy that got it right in 2023 when so many others, there was a couple of you out there, but that was pretty much it. You got it right. They kind of know you as the stock guy. But we think of you, Tom, not only as, a, as, our, as our good friend and a lovable human being, but as the original Bitcoin evangelist. I know last week you talked about 100,000 plus on Bitcoin, but I think people forget that like a decade ago, when like six drug dealers and a couple other people were the only ones using Bitcoin, you were out there saying that Bit and Bitcoin was, I think, at a couple thousand or a couple hundred bucks back then, Tom. You were bullish a decade ago on Bitcoin. What did you see in this esoteric digital currency that others did not? How's that for a hardball? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's Friday, Brian, man. Let's be nice. Yeah. Um, well, I think Bitcoin solves a lot of problems in the monetary system uh, because it is a trustless blockchain and yet has never had a fraudulent entry. That's a prodigious accomplishment, especially given uh, in that same, let's say, 14-year life, uh, the tr a traditional bank has 6% of all its transactions suspicious. And Bitcoin, in terms of its network value, has been pretty easy to model because it's based on how many wallets actually use it. That was really our early Bitcoin model was uh, using a what you call Metcalf's law, the idea that as you grow the number of users, the network utility grows. That still explains over 90% of the move of Bitcoin. And today, very few people, uh, well, it's now in the millions, actually have a Bitcoin wallet. That number could grow into the hundreds of millions or even billions. And so that's why there's still upside from here. Wow. Yeah, listen, when, when I read the book about Ross Albrecht, who did the Silk Road, Fantastic book. Can't remember the author's name top of my head, but worth a read. I bought one Bitcoin to see how it was done. I sold it like a week later, and now I just want to cry myself to sleep. Tom, <laughs> again. Tom Lee, a fun strat. Great calls and markets. Great, even better call on Bitcoin. Tom, thank you. Have a great weekend. You too, Brian. All right, be well. All right, let's take a look at our studs and duds of the week. The big winner of the week, Constellation Energy up 27%. Investors shrugging off an earnings miss because of good guidance and a dividend boost. NetApp did well. And Norwegian Cruise Lines also setting sail. First profitable year since 2019. That stock has soared. By the way, how much have these cruise lines gone up since we interviewed the CEO of Royal Caribbean the first week of January? If you listen to him, you made a lot of money. Now, the big, also, if you listen to us, you might have prevented a lot of losses. The big loss of the week, Excel Energy, down 16% over fears. It could be held liable for the wildfire raging in Texas. That is exactly what we warned you about in our recent documentary about utilities and wildfire risk also declining Insulet and United Health. All right, we are just live and getting going on a Friday and up next. A major that was Tom Lee of Funstrat once again on Last Call yesterday, Friday, March 1st. And today I'm doing a quick analysis. It's uh, the weekend. Thought we'd take a look at the indices and some of the stocks um, that were actually just talked about in the show. Um, why don't we take a look and see first, before we get into them, these are the stocks we'll go through and ETFs. So we're going to go through the indices. Uh, and then if you guys want to see some of the previous stocks that I covered, the ones that you see here, these ticker symbols, uh, you should check out the prior video with uh, Josh Brown. All right, guys. So let's first take a quick look. How did the markets do? The Dow was up 0.23% on Friday, 1.14% on the NASDAQ. 0.80% uh, up for the S&P 500 and 1.06% for the Russell 2000. Uh, when we look at the heat map, Meta, you can see for Friday was up 2.48%. Google down 1.22. Apple down 0.60. NVIDIA was up 4%. The banks didn't do so well. They were they were down a little bit. The credit cards did okay. Um, let's see, the energy stocks did pretty good. Eli Lilly up once again, 3.77%. Let's look at the weekly performance as well. So for the week, Google was down 4.96%. Meta up 3.77%. Apple down 1.57%. And there's uh, some of the other results you can see. Tesla was even up 5.56%. Let's now take a look at the charts. We'll start off with the Dow. And there's a very interesting thing that happened on the Russell 2000 that I got to show you in a few seconds. So definitely stay tuned for that. Um, we're using the Ichimoku indicator. Okay, that's uh, the that's why you see this cloud here. And so I'll be talking about the Ichimoku cloud. This is the directional movement index, and we'll be looking at the volume as well. Uh, the Dow 
for the week, this is the weekly chart um, that we're looking at, um, was you know basically flat compared to the prior close, as you can see right there. All right, uh, let's look at the daily chart and see what that looked like for Friday. Yeah, it's holding up. You know, it's holding up above the Tenkinson, the green line, and above the Kijinson and above the cloud. It's still in a very bullish, um, you know, direction right now. The the ETF itself, the Dow. So everything is looking great. How about the Russell 2000? The Russell 2000. Let's switch it to the weekly for a moment. This is something I've talked about in the past. Uh, price has been stuck, right? It's been stuck in this range for multiple weeks. And in fact, ever since 2022, it's been in here, right? This is uh, when it came in this range, uh, January 21st of 2022. And it's just been back and forth, back and forth, hitting these levels, 205.49 and 161.94. Well, today, something important did happen. Something important did happen. It did, in fact, close just slightly, just barely above this pivot candle. Do you see that candle right there? That candle, the high of that candle was 205.49. It actually broke through that level and closed at 205.89, just barely. Is this a conclusive, decisive uh, break? Not in my opinion, but it is in fact a break. I mean, and, and there's other cor you know corroborating evidence here that's telling us that this could continue now. Um, number one, the volume was higher than the prior week. The ADX moved up. See that line there? That that signifies, uh, what that signifies is the momentum. So there's higher momentum now coming in as the positive DI line moves up and the negative DI line moves down. So that's very bullish. So I like what I'm seeing. I wish it was a, a it had moved much more above that level because it's so close. Uh, and so, but it is in fact breaking above a very important level. So that's that's all I gotta say about the Russell 2000 and this is what it looked like on the daily chart. You know, so it's just, you barely, you could just barely see it right there. Okay, let's look at QQQ ETF next. $439.47 level was broken. That level is based on these prior highs of the prior weeks here. So you can see it came up there for three weeks prior and now it's broken through. We have new highs for the QQQ ETF. Everything is looking great on the weekly chart and on the daily chart. You can see, see it even more. All right. I like what I'm seeing. How about the SPY ETF, S&P 500 ETF? Also broke through this pivot candle right here, uh, the 510.52 level. Looks bullish on the daily chart. Let's look at this in the weekly. Also very bullish. We are in a, you know, this is a bull market rally, folks. This is not a bear rally, okay? Uh, we've got higher highs, higher lows. That's what you want to see. And, you know, this is the time to be, I believe, in the market invested. Um, Bitcoin even did really well. This is the BITO ETF. This one... Uh, on the weekly chart here, you see it broke above the 2385 level. That was this pivot candle here. See how it uh, had formed that high and then dropped. And so it broke above it uh, during the week of February 16th, 2024. Stayed above it, never never crossed under. And this week was a really bullish, bullish week. If you look at the daily chart, you can see it. Um, and it's... Uh, you can see it's down 0.79% of this ETF on Friday, but uh, it's a very bullish chart as far as I'm concerned. And this is the price of Bitcoin. It's uh, $62,662 uh, as I'm recording this. Let's see. Constellation Energy, towards the end of the video, they, he brought up these stocks. So I'll just run through these really quickly. On the daily chart, it looks a little bit extended right now. It's about too far away from the Tankinson and the Kijans in these lines, and that's the equilibrium level where I like to t tend to like place an order for a long position. Uh, and when it gets too far away, that's the profit-taking sp space, okay? That's the way to look at it. How about NCLH? We're looking at the daily charts, by the way, on this. Let's actually look at the weekly for this one. Yeah, so the, on the weekly, it just broke above the cloud, all right? 
I don't like the fact that the cloud, cloud has been cr crisscrossing so much. And we also have a lower high here than this high. Okay, so that's a, um, that's not good, but we do have a higher low. This low is higher than that low. So it's created a symmetrical triangle, essentially. That's the best way to describe it, a pattern. And so you'd want to wait for it to break through in either direction to get a more clear assessment of where it's going to go. So we want to get a, a close above the 2128 level, ideally. But then you're going to find some resistance at $24.01 right there, okay, based on that pivot candle. So I don't know if it's something that you want to consider at this time. All right, let's take a look now at NTAP is the NTAP is the ticker symbol for NetApp Inc. This one was up 18.17%. It, it formed a reversal candle. Okay, this is a shooting star, very negative. It's red. It's more than likely that this will now, a lot of profit taking took place once it gapped up so far. So I wouldn't be chasing this one. It's also far above the moving averages. But on the weekly chart, it looks really, really bullish, right? But you can see that long wake that formed. So we may have it come back down to the 97 level. And then from there, it could potentially pop again. How about NVIDIA? NVIDIA is super strong. It was up 4% on Friday. And on the daily chart, it looks really good too. Now, it looks like it's got to take out this pivot candle here. The on the high on that one is 823.94. Let's type that in there. I like how you can sp specifically type in the exact level with TC2000. You guys should check this um, software out. There's a uh, link down below in the description level if you're interested in playing around with the software to find out more about it. Uh, and there's also discounts there for subscribers too. All right, uh, let's see what's, what to look at next. Let's take a look at XEL is a ticker symbol. This is for the energy stock, okay? Excel Energy. Not so good. Uh, it dropped 5.92% um, on Friday, right? It's under the cloud. We don't want to be entering any long positions with the stocks that are under the cloud ever. That's Think of this as a filter, right? A quick filtering process. And, and so when price is above, it's okay to, to go long if, you, if, you, you know, if you're using specific rules for entry and exit. But when it gets under, it's not a good idea to be staying in because you never know how long it's going to stay under. See right here? Okay, we're at that point, the Ichimoku indicator it is, helps us to basically get a quick glance of where the stock is. Let's look at this on the weekly chart too, right? Look at this, multiple weeks now. You could have saved yourself approximately. Let's measure it from that point down to this point here. If you look at the box in the left-hand corner in the bottom side, you'll see you could have saved yourself 24.81% in that down move by just not either exiting or entering, um, not not entering a new long position when it was under this this level. Um, all right, well, that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys liked it, please hit that like button. It does help the channel a lot. And um, if you haven't subscribed, it doesn't cost anything. And uh, we're getting closer and closer to 5,000 subscribers. So I really wanna hit that number. Uh, please help me get there, guys, by hitting the subscribe button takes five seconds. And I'll catch you guys all in the next video.